Okay, who says you can't have fun and learn something at the same time? Well, let's take a look at the gyromagnetic procession. Here we have our 2 inch by 1 inch by 2 inch block magnet and our N48 gauss uh, 3 quarter inch uh, sphere neodymium. Up here is just a copper plated steel ball. You can see, I can just remove it. It's not a magnet, but of course it's under magnetic induction when it's sitting there. Let's see where our natural point of precession is. I'm not torquing it this way. This is how the magnet wants to move. You see the precession? Now, let's get a little bit closer. You can see our dielectric inertial plane of our block magnet. You can't see it yet on the sphere magnet because it's being occluded by this giant beast here. So, let's take a look at that. Same as the precession of the Earth, roughly. Precessional angle is 21.246 degrees. Now, not necessarily that interesting, but we'll look at something else. Now, let me get it off of the magnet, which is not that easy. Absolutely not that easy. Really powerful beast. Okay, now let's take a look at something else really quick. should buy this. It's a lot of fun. It's magnetic putty. It just has uh, magnetic uh, nanoparticles inside a uh, putty-like suspension. And here we have our little block magnet, 5 8 in 48 gauss. Now I am just going to leave it like this for a little bit. And then we're going to go on to another little demonstration. I think this is like $6 on eBay. Great little demonstration tool for showing you basically kind of how planets form and why. Well, why is the crust, you know, minerals and why is the uh, center iron? You know, why does it work like that? Why does iron under magnetic induction work its way towards the center. Just as an analogy, we'll take a look at it in a second. As you see, it slowly will take the magnet to the center and form a perfect pressure mediation of the magnet with the putty. It will eat it up and it will take it to its center. It's folding itself up, it's dragging it to the center. The warmer it is, the faster it works. So, let's set that off to the side a second. Here we have a lovely ring magnet from KJ Magnetics. No, they're not supporting me in any way. Anyway, that's where it came from. Now, let's take a look at our geomagnetic procession. First, let's take a look at... Push that away. I hate magnets jumping to themselves, especially ring magnets. Here we go. You can see I've got it marked accurately. No funny stuff. By the way, you can always tell a good magnet from a bad magnet if you have magnetic viewing film like this, which all it does is show velocity. You see that really thin line there of the dielectric inertial plane? The thinner it is, the better it's made. If it's fat, <clears throat> if it's fat or wavy, then it's poorly made. Poor construction, either that or it was, uh, or it was, uh, as dielectric uh, capacity increased uh, incorrectly due to some flaw in centering. One of the processes from the discharge coils, cap banks to the discharge coils. Anyway, let's take a look. So there's our ring magnet, and we know where the inertial plane is on this. It's right along the edge. You're saying, well, it's a ring magnet. Well, we just showed that to you in a block magnet. Geomagnetic precession is the same. So, here we go. Here you can see what we have. Let's lay it flat. And just as a marker indicator, let's put our copper-coated steel BB right at the top there. So we can take a look at gyromagnetic precession. It says you can't have fun and educate yourself at the same time.
You can actually, the BB has a little, or a steel ball has a little leeway one way or the other. But, yeah, let's take a look at our magnetic viewing film, which is velocity viewing film. See, here we are. And you see here, see the pattern that we get? This is the start of our ring here. So, let's look at it without getting a bunch of light interference. There, there, there. See, we have torsion. This is both due to the torsion, pressure balance mediation between the dielectricity of the two magnets, also the fact that it's a ring magnet, so you have fields mediating through. If you actually just cut the ring magnet vertically like this, it will mediate itself, centrifugal and centripetal reciprocation, just as if this were a bar magnet. So if you were to only cut out this section, it would be just like a bar magnet. North up here, south down here, either way doesn't make any difference. So. And as we come over to the ring, you can obviously see the ring. And as we come over to the midpoint between the two, there you go. Now, here's the neat thing. If you get a sphere magnet like this, just the right size, since it only wants to sit like this, are you sure it only wants to sit like this? Why, yes, of course it does, or just the opposite on the other side. Well. Let's take a look and see if that's the case. Remember, this is our dielectric inertial plane. Here is the angle of gyromagnetic precession, how it wants to sit. Doesn't matter if it's a ring magnet, we just showed it to you on our uh, cube magnet. So let's see what happens if we give her a little nudge to the center. Look! Now let me push it up so you can see it. There's our inertial plane there, wanting to sit perfectly in line with the inertial plane of the center part of the magnet. Same all the way around. Just as if the, the sphere magnet were not in the inside. And you can see that it has a little leeway. Because I'll push it. You'll see that it's not stuck in there. You can actually push it out. You can actually see a gap right there. You see the gap? Looks like Saturn, doesn't it? But if I push it up some, you can see our dielectric inertial plane on our sphere magnet. Oh, there we go. See it? Uh, there we go. The sphere magnet is very powerful, by the way. They don't make really good. You're able to notice that. Let me put some marks on here so you can see that there's really no pressure. The sphere magnet is actually floating freely in space in the tiny little gap between the sphere magnet and the disc magnet. So, I'm able to hold the sphere magnet and do this with the disc, disc magnet. I have just a little bit of play one way or the other and let me get a flashlight. You'll notice also that it likes to spin, especially if this were a flat surface. It uh, will spin in very interesting, interesting movements. So. Let's take a look now and shine light through the back. And let's turn our light off here. Should be able to see light gap all the way around if I hold it right. We have a free floating neodymium sphere of significant weight. the magnets aren't made absolutely perfect, it will go to one side or the other. <laughs> oh, small mistake there on my part. Wants to contact one little edge there. I should have got the other ring magnet because that one will float right in the middle. Absolutely, so you can see the gap back there. This one wants to come to one edge. Pins to be super, super precise to get a perfect air gap between the sphere and the ring. Looks like Saturn. Everybody should have this as a little demonstration tool, right? 
as I showed you before, oh, we push up and uh, here we go. Well, let's see, see it on the other side. Push up. There's our inertial plane on our sphere magnet. Spins freely in there with an air gap. Although, although this particular ring wants to contact a tiny little portion of the sphere, getting free movement. Can you say frictionless gear? Uh interesting. Yes, no. Now, to prove you there's no trickery, if I just apply a little bit of force, you'll notice it will pop out uh, to the other side. And here we have What about the dielectric inertial plane? You see? With our magnet level like this. Here is our gyromagnetic precession. But in the center, uh, here we go, perfectly level. Dielectricity to dielectricity. Now it's operating as one magnet, but free floating. Although not on this particular ring. I should have grabbed the other ring. Free floating in the center. I wish I should have grabbed the other magnet. Look at that mite. Lovely, huh? And it makes lovely little processional movements if this were a really flat surface. Which, let's see if we can make this a really flat surface. Take a peek. Actually, it probably won't since it's on. It makes lovely little gyrations as it's fighting the Earth's magnetosphere. Unfortunately, since I've got this on a metal top, it's also reacting in attraction to the metal top that I've got everything sitting on. So if you put it on a non-ferrous top, you also can't see it, but I'm also getting able to see the lovely dancing pattern that it creates on top of our uh, field viewing film, which is rather educational. Now, let's go take a look at our magic putty. It's still making its way there and depends on how warm it is and how fast it will suck up the magnet. But eventually it will gobble it up and take it to the center. You can see it working its way there right now. Just like the Earth and other planets. You have your solid ferrous mass in the center and your crust on the outside. Let's take it to where it eventually will go since you don't want to watch 10 more minutes of watching paint dry like this. What will eventually will happen is this is what will happen. You'll have a perfect sphere and it will form itself and gobble up the magnet completely. Just look up uh, magnetic putty on eBay if you want. Now our magnet is right in the center where Our magnetic pressure gradients want to take the putty and envelop it around the magnet. Just like field reciprocation except in 3D using a putty form. And here we go. We'll have to get it out of the center. Amazingly enough, this stuff does not stain your hands, but it will stain the living dog's snot out of any fabric material. I learned that the hard way. won't stain your hands at all, but... It will stain absolutely any and every piece of fabric you dare lay it on for just a second. It will do it. And let's make out a little hot twist here and see what happens. Works better when it's hot, obviously. Anyway, that was our magnetic putty and you should buy one of these and you should buy maybe five or six of them you'll get one you have three or four spheres and five or six discs and what you'll end up with sorry I didn't have it for this video you will have a sphere that floats in free space floats in free space with a nice little perfect gap behind it Talk about magnetic levitation toys. You ever heard of that uh, crazy ass toy that's infuriating to play with? It's called a Levitron. Well, here's your $8 Levitron. And you don't have to fight with it, and once you get it that way, it stays that way. 
fun times for all, mate. That's for all the Aussies out there. Oh, not too hard to get it out. Remember, gyromagnetic procession. What we were talking about. Where something wants to be necessitatively. I hope this video was both entertaining and educational, at least to some degree. Thanks for watching.